Uh, the, the drug discovery world, okay, been at Berkeley and now at Scripps, uh, have a lab at Scripps, so for roughly 30 years been doing academic research, so now that effort fairly well, um, but also um, set up uh, uh, an institute funded by Novartis, the Genomics Institute of the Novartis Research Foundation, GNF, where, uh, you know, it wound up, it's about 600 people nowadays, but in the beginning it was one person, and we really created the drug discovery infrastructure there from scratch. So we really learned the hard way by the School of Hard Knocks how to do that and experimented with different ways to do that. And, and so we thought that based on that experience, some of those experiences would allow us to do this over, not in the for-profit sector, but in the non-for-profit sector. And, and more recently, as we move towards clinical development, uh, we've been able to recruit Tim Wright. Tim was the head of translational sciences and then became the head of development at Novartis um, uh, with a really highly successful development group. And he recently retired from Novartis at the young age of 59 and decided to join us to help us put medicines in the clinic. So we do have experience um, in doing this. Um, and, and, and some take-home lessons. Uh, when, when we set up GNF, we actually invested a lot of Novartis money in, in looking at different ways to accelerate the, drug, the, the discovery of innovative new drugs. Um, we set up large-scale screening. We screened small molecules, um, uh, large collections of small molecules. All the yellow, stobbly robot arms were kind of trans from the auto industry um, to life sciences at GNF. Um, we screened large genomic DNA libraries. We had probably the largest um, uh, mouse ENU program uh, on the planet at the time. Um, and, and then we also developed high throughput structural biology, which we spun out into CIRIC. So we had a lot of experiences. And out of that, the take home lessons were the things that really worked well to discover interesting new. Uh, starting points in drug discovery were small molecule cell based screens. Um, and, and the reason for that is A, if you're going to do a nonprofit translational research institute, you s seriously do not want to work on the validated targets that all of pharma is working on because you can't compete. Okay, you have one or two postdocs working on a project, there's no way you're going to compete. Uh, on a major validated drug target. So you have to find new, interesting things. Um, and quite frankly, in the disease areas we're working in, in regenerative medicine, there aren't all that many known targets anyway. But there are a lot of validated phenotypes. If you want to treat osteoarthritis, turn an MSC into a chondrocyte and make new cartilage, okay? Uh, so there are a lot of very well validated cellular phenotypes that you know will translate into human disease. And by doing cell-based screens with small molecule libraries, you're probing every possible mechanism that could bear on that disease phenotype. Okay? And so it gives you a lot of opportunities to make discoveries, okay, and discoveries that are new. And unlike SI RNA screens or cDNA screens or what have you, you wind up with a small molecule that's cell permeable that's probably got reasonable pharmacology or close to that as a start point for drug discovery. So that was really kind of the major insight that if we're going to do this and look at unmet medical needs in a not-for-profit setting with minimal resources, this is a good way to go. Um, we also worked very opportunistically across all disease areas that Novartis was interested in. And that's because we had a lot of high throughput technologies that allowed us to go into an area very quickly and explore that space and see whether there were interesting opportunities, okay? And so that let you turn over a lot of rocks looking for interesting opportunities rather than focusing on one or two 